Welcome to Home Church, everybody. We uh, are back in my living room today, and it is great to have all of you with me. And most importantly today, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day uh, to all of the moms out there, stepmoms, foster moms, grandmoms. Uh, happy Mother's Day today. I hope that you feel special because you are, and I hope that you are blessed today. Uh, just one little thing. I... Uh, I dressed up a little bit in your honor today, so I love all of you moms. Thank you for all that you do. So we are in this series where we're looking at the things that Jesus did and the things that Jesus said. And of course, Jesus had a mom, and her name was Mary, and Jesus loved his mom. The Bible doesn't give us too much information about the relationship between Jesus and his mom, but sometimes I like to just imagine what that may have been like. The Bible's almost completely silent about the years that Jesus was growing up and living with his mom, Mary, and his adopted dad, Joseph. But I imagine those, you know, sleepless nights when Jesus was a baby and wasn't sleeping through the night yet, and Mary had to get up several times to feed him, you know, doing mom things and chasing around little toddler Jesus when he was learning to walk and then starting to run all over the place. And then when Jesus was a youth, you know, dealing with those challenging times of getting Jesus to clean his room and to do his homework. <laughs> Sometimes we don't picture those early years too much with Jesus, but you know, there was Mary, his mom, being a mom. And we know that Jesus loved his mom. There was one seen the Bible that depicts this and, and paints for us a, a very special love bond between Jesus and his mom. It was a very dramatic scene. It was right at the end of Jesus' life. And I want you to take a look with me in the Bible at that scene. So please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. I'll give you a minute to find it. John chapter 19. And we're going to begin reading in verse 16. John 19, verse 16. So he delivered him, Pilate delivered Jesus, over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. So most of us are familiar with this gruesome crucifixion scene, which uh, we looked at just several weeks ago at Easter time. But imagine, if you will, for a second, moms, imagine what it must have been like for Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was there. She was watching all of this transpire. We read that in, in verse 25. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, and uh, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. I think the most difficult thing for any mom is to have one of her children pass away. And I know that some of our dear moms at the bridge have had to experience that heartache. But imagine, on top of that, actually watching the slow and torturous death of your son taking place. This is exactly what happened to Mary, the mother of Jesus. But now, I want you to notice the tender heart of love and compassion that Jesus demonstrates for his mother. Look at verse 26. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. You see, Jesus made sure that his mother was going to be taken care of by 
one of his best friends, John. I love that. I mean, in the most difficult and painful moment of his life, Jesus has on his mind his mom. His mom. And watch this. Not just his mom, but also you moms. Jesus was thinking about all moms. In fact, moms, God has been thinking about you from the very beginning. The book of Genesis in chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And then in chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So if you follow with me God's plan in creation, from his own image comes mankind in the form of man and woman. Then God's plan is for man and woman to become husband and wife and eventually dad and what, kids? Mom. That's right. See, God has been thinking about you, mom, since the very beginning. It's the way he ordered his creation. It's foundational. It's the bedrock of society. The role of mom is God's special creation and design right from the beginning of time. But it doesn't stop there. When, when God now gives the basic laws of society, the ways in which individuals and nations are to behave themselves, he boils those laws down to a basic 10 laws known as the 10 commandments. There are the ones that you would expect, like do not murder, do not steal, but right there in the top 10, God is still thinking about you, moms. We read it in Deuteronomy chapter 5 in the list of the Ten Commandments. It says, honor your father and your what? Your mother. As the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You see, God passes on his special love and care for moms as an expectation for his creation. A very high expectation at that. It's like top 10. God says, because I created moms in my image and I plan for moms as the foundational bedrock for all societies, I want you all to now honor moms. Honor here means to highly value or to prize highly your moms. And why does God ask us to do that? Because he does. Because God highly values moms. And from the New Testament, Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Children, obey your moms in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Now, please forgive me for focusing this verse on moms, even though it says your parents, but I just chose to use moms in this case. See, when we honor and obey our moms, what does it say? It pleases the Lord. And so, moms, today, on your special day, we want to join with the wisdom from the wisdom writer of Proverbs chapter 31. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. So we rise up to call you blessed today, moms. We praise you. And not just us. Remember that God has had you on his mind since the beginning. And even on the cross, Jesus looking down with love and grace and tenderness, and he sees Mary, his mother, and all the other moms along with her today. And then he shed his blood for you. (laughs) Moms, you are loved. You are loved. Well, I have the honor uh, of having my wife, Tracy, the mother of my two children, here with me today. And she's going to come and 
join me on the couch and um, I've asked her if she wouldn't mind to share some of the thoughts that God has put on her heart for moms today. So thanks for doing this, Tracy. Sure. Can I just say happy Mother's Day to you moms? You guys are awesome and you are dearly loved. You know, one of the ways that I have been keeping busy these last few weeks is by cleaning out some of the cupboards and sifting through the piles of stuff that have been needing my attention for quite some time. I know for some of you, cleaning has not been your focus, and your weeks have looked much different than mine. Your seasons and situations, we all have different ones, but as moms, we have so much in common. So whatever you're facing, whatever your view is from inside your house, God's got you right where he needs you to be. And if I could hug and encourage each one personally, I would. Inside one of those boxes that I was cleaning out, I came across some encouragement cards. I used to use them for my kids. You know the cards, right? <laughs> the cute little ones that you put in their school lunch with the messages that are meant to put a smile on their face when they read it. Notes to remind them that you love them and that you believe in them. Let me share a few of the messages on these cards. You've probably heard these messages before, and who knows? Maybe you've even shared some of these encouragements with your own kids. I love you more than you will ever know. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. You've got this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are one of a kind. Be you. You're doing a great job. You are loved. Moms, I think we all agree that we love our kids. We love them a lot. There is incredible evidence of that love everywhere we look. You and I have a front row seat to seeing how special and how unique each of our kids are. And we will do almost anything to let them know how much we love them. As I sat and cleaned out the cards, it hit me. These messages that I will spend a lifetime trying to instill in my kids are exactly the same messages my Heavenly Father would tell me to. Wouldn't you agree that as moms, we filter through a lot of noise every day? And sometimes the loudest sounds come from the very conversations we have with ourselves. You know the ones where doubt, comparison, feelings of inadequacy, fatigue, or fear leave us feeling consumed and often overwhelmed. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel the weight of trying to hold onto everything, keep everything together, and keep so many balls in the air at the same time. I have multiple things that are fighting for my attention, and yet I feel like I can't quite get it all straight. Hmm. That's when I know my eyes have shifted away from what God says in his word. So on this Mother's Day, I pray that for you, there will be one voice that you hear that rises above all the other noises. I pray that it would be God's voice of encouragement and love for you that speaks the loudest. I pray that his truth would reign in your life and that his love for you would be your strength. May it be his wisdom that guides you and the truth of his word be the measure of what you compare all things to. Here's a little challenge for you. The next time you find yourself encouraging your kids and you're letting them know how much they're loved, I encourage you to listen. Listen as you speak and hear the truths that are coming out of your mouth as if they were coming back to you in the form of God's voice speaking directly to you. Listen to these lunchbox cards again, but this time, Listen to them not like you're going to put them in your kid's lunch, but listen to them as if God, your Father, is speaking directly to you, his child. I love you more than you will ever know. I want you to know that. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. I sent my only son to die for you. I know that the role I've placed you in is sometimes hard. 
But moms, you've got this. You can do great things. I see you. I know you better than you know yourself. I created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You, you are one of a kind. So keep your eyes on me. Don't stray and compare your strengths and weaknesses with others. I made you for a purpose. I've made you unique. So be you. There are days where you will doubt your impact and your role. Keep trusting me. You're doing a great job. I have given you access to the most incredible power source through the Holy Spirit. Lean on him and remember, you are loved. <laughs> Mom's happy Mother's Day. <laughs> You are loved beyond words by your Heavenly Father. And as you are celebrated today, may you rest in His love for you. <laughs> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance to you and give you peace. Moms, you are loved. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Wow. Ah, so beautiful. Um, I want to say also to my mom, happy, mm -hmm. happy Mother's Day to you. Do you want to say Me happy too. Mother's Day to your mom? Happy Mother's Day, mom. <laughs> to all the moms out there, we love you so much. Uh, let's just pray. Um, God, I thank you for these beautiful words that you put on Tracy's heart for moms today. They are so true. Um, you love them so much and you have created them so special and so unique and your eyes are on them and, um, and you're right there with them to give them power, to give them strength, to give them the ability to be the moms that you have called them to be. Help them during those difficult times where there's discouragement, they feel like they can't go on maybe, they're not sure what to do. Give them your wisdom, give them your strength. Let them know that you're right there with them and that they're doing a good job. And then during those fun times, when things are going great and they're just seeing their kids grow, just help them to celebrate the gift of life and, and the gift of these children and how you've uh, blessed them uh, with the great privilege of raising these children. So God, please uh, reach Reach through the computer and television screens today and just bring your blessing on each mom that is in the room um, and remind them often that they are greatly loved by you and that we as their children and onlookers, husbands, we love them too. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> we love you, moms. Love you guys. <laughs> we'll see you next week. God bless. <laughs>